Hello, I'm Paul Ndiho. Welcome to the Africa Innovation and Technology Channel. Every week, we will strive to bring you inspiring and empowering stories about how young African innovators are creating innovations and using them to change the continent. The channel will showcase these young entrepreneurs. In this week's edition, we'll feature two young African innovators who have created some fascinating startups and are building amazing products that can compete internationally. We start in Congo, Brazzaville, where 28-year-old Veron Manku developed Africa's first homegrown tablet computer, selling at just $300 where C, meaning starlight in one of the dialects of the Congo, uh, with this innovation, he has opened the world to the Congolese. <laughs> it's part of the technological revolution that is sweeping across the continent, where almost every free hand and nearly every face is pinched in concentration, focused on a handheld device like a tablet, computer or a smartphone. In many parts of the world, Apple iPad is often the innovation of choice. But in Africa, it's the innovation of necessity. And in Brazzaville, Congo, it's the way C, Africa's very own tablet, computer designed to bring cheaper technology and internet connectivity to masses. This is primarily a Congolese product. I had to buy it because it was made by a Congolese. Afterwards, I had some doubts. Would it work? But it proved to last. I was proved wrong, and I'm pleased I bought it. The way C's designer and engineer Verona Manku says his goal was to create affordable computers and to bring internet access to millions of Africans. The device is designed in Congo but assembled in China. The idea was to come up with a computer tablet that wasn't expensive to allow as many people to have access to internet. Over the years, the computer has evolved and is no longer just accessible in the office. So our project also changed in 2007 and moved towards making a computer tablet. After years of research and technology, as well as financing from the project, we then presented it and it has been on the market since January 2012. The way C was created by Manku's company VMK and went on sale for the first time this year in Congo at $300. VMK forecasts its domestic sales to reach over 100,000 tablets within one year before it launches the product to neighboring countries in West Africa. Manku says its technical features put it on the same level as other tablets on the market. Basically, it's an ideal companion that you can use anywhere. You can surf the internet and be in touch with relatives via applications like Facebook, share information on applications as Twitter. The way she is retailed in Congo by an Indian-based mobile phone company, Bat Airtel, and has sold over 2,000 units in Brazzaville alone with more orders streaming in. From the customer's experience, meaning those who have bought the product and those who have used it, they have seen its efficiency, speed, and capacity. And the customers have also quickly realized that the product is on par with those on the international market. Africa is the fastest growing mobile market in the world and will be home to 738 million handsets by the end of this year. According to a survey by GSMA, which represents the interests of mobile operators worldwide, the survey says the rise of smartphones has also given millions of Africans internet access for the first time. I personally think that the product is reliable because if the product was not reliable, we would not have put it on the market. If it was not reliable, a great partner like Airtel would not have wanted to attach its name on something that is not legitimate. Technology experts are dubbing Verona Manku as the next Steve Jobs of Africa and that he's among a growing class of technology developers. The popularity of his locally engineered product is even more enticing for the tech-savvy youth than internationally known brands as Africa's increasingly relies on homegrown innovations. Even iPad and other products were made with good quality. 
but they were not made in seconds. Those behind the Congolese computer tablet started it bit by bit. So yes, I still think that it's a solid product. Over time, there will be more expertise and progress, and the product will have better quality. At only 26 years old, Verona Manku is wasting little time creating his next product. His company already is working on a Congolese smartphone that he expects to launch later this year. Electronic giants like Samsung are already aggressively courting African consumers with built for Africa smartphones that highlight energy saving electrical features and are built to withstand high temperatures and the erratic power supply. Wow, what an inspiring story. There is a saying that necessity is the mother of innovation and what these young men are doing is truly really remarkable and ought to be commended for it. We'll pause for a short break, but before we take a short break, we want to know what you think about the stories we cover on the Africa Innovation and Technology channel. Let us know through Twitter and Facebook. The address is Africa Innovations and Technology. Also, find out more about us on www.africainnovation.net. Coming up, a Ugandan app developer makes millions are selling his app to Nokia phone. Welcome back to the Africa Innovation and Technology Channel. I am Paul Diho. From West Africa to Southern Africa to East Africa and Central Africa, the continents are leapfrogging into mobile revolution demonstrated the power of latecomer advantages. Africa is now the origin of industries such as mobile money transfers and applications that are changing our communities. The technology explosion has made access easier, largely through mobile broadband. This revolution is also giving entrepreneurs an opportunity to create applications for those technology just like the big software companies. Here is a profile of a young man from Uganda. Abdul Sekalala creates mobile phone applications that compete with some of the biggest names in the mobile software. So far, the young entrepreneur has developed nine international recognized applications, including Wildbook, a dictionary app with a word of the day, function that includes uh, definitions and synonyms. Sekalala earns just over one US dollar for each download from Nokia's office store, and uh, his applications have been downloaded over 300,000 times so far. I have about four themes and five applications or the other way around, five applications, four themes. Okay. Now the themes are basically to customize the UI of your phone, the way your phone appears, the screens, the transitions, the colors. And the apps, we have Wordbook, which is a dictionary, and there's Tutu Translate, which is basically a translator. And then there's, uh, there's World Sports, which is a sports application for soccer fans. Mr. Sekalala caught his big break when the mobile phone company Nokia held a training session in Uganda last year to help software developers expand their skills in building applications. He quickly learned how to develop his own application and Nokia was willing to adapt it for their online application store. Nokia plans an aggressive growth strategy focusing on outing their productions in the hands of millions of new customers. This gives the developers like Sekalala a wider market at a time when the demand for applications to access the internet is at all time high. The uh, Uganda theme for Nokia. Uh, I published that app late last year, like in December. 
And the first time, the first week of its, account, its launch, it became number three in the most downloaded themes in the world. That's when I felt like, well, this is my, my number one of everything I've developed. This is it. This is what's going to make my mark. Nokia's Agatha Gikunda says developers like Sekalala have a unique opportunity to access the international market and make money. What Nokia offers developers as far as monetizing is we let them make the decision on how they want to make money. So one of the ways that they can actually make money is they put it on the store for free so consumers around the world can download it for free but they make money through advertisements. So one of the apps that Abdu created, that's what he incorporated. So he put in-app advertising. So advertisers around the world pop up their ads within his application and he makes money from that. That money is entirely... Africa has the world's fastest growing telecom markets and only say the internet-based mobile solutions are helping boost development and growth on the continent. Gikunda says there is a great potential for mobile app businesses in Africa because companies are looking for new ideas to engage customers. Africa is definitely the next frontier. Developers here have a huge opportunity that they've never ever had before to create businesses that require very little startup capital. They already trained in development. So we then take the next step and train them on development for a mobile phone. And all you need is your computer and your idea. You publish your application for free. You select which countries around the world, and that is it. And other African entrepreneurs see great opportunities in the mobile technology and look forward to continued growth in the future. He makes over 100 US dollars a day from his apps. He says he will not be looking for a job soon but instead he will continue to develop new applications. Analysts believe that the world's adaptation to information age through science and technology is important to every country's future growth and prosperity. For Africa, where poverty is rampant, science and technology is the answer. Next week on the Africa Innovation and Technology Channel, we'll take a closer look at our online shopping in Nigeria and students competing in an apps challenge competition. That's our show. Be sure to watch Africa Innovations and Technology Channel on our website at www.africainnovations.net. Thanks for watching.